Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we are gonna follow up on a story that broke on Halloween that we thought, is this a trick or a treat? I just don't know. Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian holding hands. All right, we're gonna see what actually is going on here. We're gonna read the insider quotes and stuff, and I'm gonna kind of break this down from my POV as per usual. But more than that, we're gonna talk about what we can learn what to do when you have a crush on like the weird guy, you know, the quirky guy, the funny guy, the guy who's maybe out of your wheelhouse. And more than just that, do you ever find yourself breaking up with someone and then dating someone totally on the opposite end of the spectrum? Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? How can you make that last? Or at the very least, like, what does it mean? We're going to get into it, but before we do, if you want to chit chat with me one on one, head to my website, shallonlester.com and click submit a question. I can also do an Instagram review. And if you need help ASAP, you can click the ASAP option. I get back to you in just 24 hours because sometimes, you know, we really just need to get an answer. We need some help. And I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about revenge and war and getting back at people because we just wrapped up Evil Week. <sighs> so sad. I mean, I love Evil Week. It almost kills me every year because it's like so intense, but you can go ahead and binge the whole thing right down here at the link in the bio. It's all free. It's all on YouTube this year. So go ahead and check it out because I'm a fucking monster. Okay. Speaking of monsters, Kim and P. Okay. So here's what happened. They were at Knott's Berry Farm. If you guys are from California, you know Knott's Berry Farm. Oh, we used to like go on field trips there. And now that I'm like an old person, I love going there for like the history. Like, <laughs> When you were young, it was like where you went in like high school and middle school and like the bad kids were like finger blasting each other on the rides. And I was like, I'll have another churro. But every Halloween they turn into Not Scary Farm and it's like this amusement park. It, Not Scary Farm's an amusement park, sorry. And it's this amusement park wide haunted house. It is scary as fuck. I do not like to be scared. The scariest movie I've ever seen is Scream. I, mm -mm, no, I'm just... No, I'm not. Nope. Nope. I'm a big, big old wuss. I think people with a lot of imagination don't do well with scary movies because we're like, this is completely possible. And our imagination just picks up where the movie leaves off and lives forever. So they were on a scary ride and photographers caught them holding hands. Look, I personally don't think this is anything more than Kim being scared and like grabbing his hand. I would do that on a ride. I'd grab someone's wiener if it's available. I'm like, let me hold on to any human person who can save me from this hellscape. So I don't really think it's anything more than that. And they, you know, they were there with some other friends. I think it's being so overblown. A lot of you guys think Chris, Chris Jong-un is behind it. Like Chris Jenner's behind it. I don't. I don't know, like I go back and forth about this, like working in celebrity journalism for as long as I did, like I saw liter literal receipts that our company and other magazine companies would pay the Kardashians, would pay Chris and her companies money every month to be a source or to not sue or to feed just enough information. Like there was definitely secret deals being brokered. On the other, on the other hand, I do feel like they're celebrity is so large now it's kind of a machine that goes of itself like there's so many of them first of all they're just like replicating at the speed of sound I don't know that they need to plant stories anymore it's like why to what end like they're already the most famous people in the world so holding hands with this person might really not do much but what I loved about this so I read you know all the coverage and it's like insiders say, you know, they're they're just good friends hanging out. Neither one of them have any attraction to each other. Neither one of them, neither what they both mutually don't have an attraction to each other. Okay, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that is probably true from Kim's point of view. And oh yeah, yeah. So Pete is like, I don't wanna, I don't wouldn't wanna fuck her at all with those big, great boobs and lips, and I don't want to put my scabby penis anywhere near her. Really? Okay. Now look, I know you guys, some of you guys love Pete and think he's gorgeous. He's, I don't think he's gorgeous, and I don't think he's like a good person to date. He's got borderline personality disorder, and we've talked about that a lot, and I've said what I said, and people like try to cancel me and say I was so harsh for saying that. I, I'm sorry, you don't want to date someone with borderline. And if one of you guys has borderline personality and you guys always, if you do, you come in the comments and you just, it's like this all caps demented rant. And it's like, oh, well, way to dispel the stereotype 
that BPD uh, can be a real fucking handful because you look completely, totally just poised and reasonable. Let's color me incorrect. BPD is something that can be helped with therapy. But Pete has talked a lot about how, like, he just kind of, ah, you know, I do drugs, parties back on. You know, I'll never forget him saying that, parties back on after he got out of rehab or fired his therapist. It's like, okay, dude, like, you don't really seem serious about changing your pathology or undoing any of these issues because there's, like, an endless supply of, like, starlets for you to fuck and, like, kind of mess up. So, okay. I whatever my point is even if you didn't have bpd like even if he was just you know the most well-adjusted man in the world i still don't know if i see kim and him like really clicking but a lot of you guys because i asked you like a topic here you said something that i think is so right you're like i kind of love this for kim like if it's true you know we're all sort of like inhabiting this world where maybe this is true sure i kind of love this for kim because she just needs something fun after this, like, the drama of Kanye and his misery. Did you guys hear he's selling his ranch in Montana? Oh, I'm sorry, in Wyoming? It's very close. We're a few hours drive. Thank fuck. Get out of here. Get out of here. Can you take Jeffree Star with you? That creepy motherfucker and his yak farm? You know he applied for a slaughterhouse license? There is... I, mm, 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 mm. I do not like him. I do not like him. Dark, dark energy. I told you guys, we used to like be on the emo scene together. Like, not together, but we were both in it in New York. And we were at the same parties. We knew the same people. And I am not someone who uses like these kind of terms. But he has the darkest energy I have ever experienced in my life. I was, and even, this was like 10 years ago. I'm like, I don't want to be around this person. I don't want to be around him. Like, and I think from what we've seen of him, it is just, he's just kind of gotten better at it. But I digress. We're not here to talk about them. I do agree with you guys that it would be great for Kim to have some sort of like palate cleanser after a heavy marriage with a heavy person and a heavy divorce and heavy publicity. You know, something that's just like, hey, I brought the weed. You want to go to Duncan? And she's like, okay, like, Good for her. Look at what her sister Courtney's doing with Travis. They're like, enough with the fucking Halloween costumes. And all the Halloween costumes, talk about borderline personality disorder. I mean, they picked like the most deranged and demented couples. Sid and Nancy, these people from True Romance. It's just like, we get it. We all get it. I don't exactly know what it is. Like what the thesis statement of your message is, what your personal brand of mayhem is but like we get it so she i'm sure kim looks at that and is like wow like courtney's on this like thrill ride with travis she's so happy after jettisoning scott this dead weight she probably looks at mgk and marine marine gun kelly uh now i want to go as marine gun kelly for the next halloween i'm like a dolphin but in tartan pants and spiky bleached hair i'm like oh yeah oh and like a spiked belt from Hot Topic. I'm gonna file this away. It's gonna be an octopus. I'm into this. <laughs> Do you guys like my Doc Ho holiday costume? Anyway. So Kim is probably looking around and seeing her friends in like, just like fun, lively relationships that are working out. I mean, Travis and Courtney are engaged. MGK and Megan very well might make it official. They seem like so intense. And so I can see how she's like, I just want to feel something and something good. I kind of just want to be overwhelmed because Kim is sort of like that, you know, she likes that feeling of just a really intense man. Now, as we know from intense relationships, a little of that can go a long way and maybe she needs intensity and that aliveness. I mean, look at her life. Her life is intense. You know, she just wanted a very like mellow existence. She would have stuck with Chris Humphreys, who wanted her to move back to Minnesota and be a housewife, right? And she was like, no. So maybe Pete represents an intensity that's a little bit more gay and frivolous than Kanye's was. You know, it's like just enough in her wheelhouse, but just enough outside of it so that it feels new and refreshing. And haven't we all kind of felt that? 
I know when I got divorced, I dated someone completely different from my husband. I mean, completely. My next like real boyfriend was super young and <laughs> he played college hockey. Hi, Joe. I love you. And he was like, just like a fuck boy and outgoing and like so like cool. He like all up on music, all up on fashion. And you know, my husband wasn't like that. He was like a hedge funder and a computer guy. And he was just, they were just very, very different. And it felt sort of refreshing and rejuvenating to me because it gave me a sense of like, there's still life out there. There's still life out there for me. Cause when you get out of a relationship that's long, you just think like, how the fuck am I going to start over? Who am I going to meet that I'm ever going to love? And you kind of, because for the last chunk of your memory, all your data was about this one type of person, you know? And that's kind of all you can see in the world. Like, well, why would I even leave? Because I'm just going to end up meeting someone just like him because I'm sure every guy's like him. It's like kind of inconceivable that there's different types of people until you meet one and then you're like, oh my God, oh my God, right? And so the lure of that newness and that freshness is very, very appealing. But is it healthy? Is it healthy? We as human beings are overcorrectors. You know, we grew up in a really strict Catholic family and we go to college and the nipples are pierced, baby, right? I left New York City after a decade plus the fast paced life. I'm an it girl. People know me to the middle of Montana. That seems extreme. And you know what? When people said that to me, when my friends said that to me and they were saying it very gently, they're like, do you think? maybe and I'm like I know what you're gonna say is this an overcorrection is this kind of an extreme move yeah it absolutely is but that doesn't mean it's the wrong one at least not for this season I have no idea if I'm going to stay in Montana the rest of my life I love it now I am fully into this season of my Montananess as far as I know this is my home for the foreseeable future I have no plans to leave I love it I can't stand being anywhere else but when I was explaining it to people I'm like I I know that I believe me I know how this looks and I know how extreme it seems but I am also in a data gathering place when I was in New York after a while because I've been there so long there was no more data to gather about it I know it I know this neighborhood I know this I know what I like I know what I hate I just felt very like oh just there was no more novelty there was nothing to discover and when we date someone for a long time, we feel like that too. It's like you again. Oh, that story. No, I know the story. Thanks, Pete. Right? We just, it gets old. And so when we overcorrect and date these wildly different people, we're gathering data. And that's how I want you to think of it. Don't look at going from the Kanye to the Pete as like, Pete's my true love. Maybe he, maybe he is, but maybe he isn't. Maybe he's a data pod. Maybe you're gathering data, right? Like, okay, now I know I do need someone fairly intense because I'm an intense person. I like that aliveness. But maybe I want them to be intense about their career because I like that. But maybe a career that doesn't have anything to do with mine. Because now that I've been married to Kanye and now that I dated Pete, I realize that someone who's really intense about their career sets up a lot of competition, a competition dynamic in our relationship because they're in kind of my sphere. That's not good. Maybe I want to date someone who's intense about their career and they're a hedge funder in Connecticut. Huh. Okay. Now you've gained data because what do we always say? I never lose. I win or I learn. And shout out to my friend Pandora for this topic suggestion. Thanks, Pandy. I hope I'm doing you proud because we were talking about this. She, and she texted me. She's like, I think maybe this is like a good angle because you know, we, she's like, I saw you do it after your divorce. I've done it. Like, we just swing wildly to the opposite side. And as long as we can get a little bit of objectivity about what's driving that, it's okay. You know, like I know what I'm doing. I know this might not be my forever person, my forever home, my forever job, my forever haircut, but I need to explore some frontiers. I need to feel alive and nothing makes us feel more alive than exploration. We've talked before about the reasons based on studies, why people cheat to explore different sides of their personalities and to feel alive. And when we've talked about cheating in videos and I, you know, I used, I used to be a cheater. I used to cheat on my boyfriends all the time. 
And then I realized like I'm doing that because I'm not exploring in other categories of my life. If I don't feel alive in my life, it's not my fucking boyfriend's fault. It's my own. If I have hobbies that are stimulating, a job that's fulfilling, friendships that are feeding me, maybe I wouldn't be so dissatisfied with this relationship. Maybe I would, but at least then I could be like, okay, then I'm, I'm just breaking up with you. I'm not going to cheat on you. I'm not trying to get that like za za za, that like zing of excitement. I'm getting it in healthier ways. And if I still feel like I need it, okay, now I can say for real, because I've done all the good stuff, all the good work, this is not the relationship for me. So that need for aliveness and stimulation, it goes all the way out in all aspects of our life from where we live to where we work to our haircut to the people we date. But again, acknowledge that that might be what's going on. And that's fine. Think of yourself like Goldilocks. <clears throat> Goldie Cox, shall we say. You tried this, eh. You tried that, eh. What's in the middle? If you put these together, what's in the middle? And if you don't know, ask your friends. Always go to our friends, my group of friends in New York, the Tit Friends, we call it the board of directors. Because we're like, if we could just truly elect each other as like the board of directors, like in a company you have like the CEO and that like, say I'd be the CEO of my own company, but then I'd have board of directors who are like, I'm sorry, we've overruled this decision. If you keep making bad choices, we're gonna have to remove you. And this won't be your company anymore. We're gonna kick you out of your own company. Like, oh, happens all the time in business. But what if like, so if one of us is dating someone terrible and making a bad choice, we're like, do we need to have the board of directors convene? Because I don't think we'd approve this decision. There really is the wisdom of the crowd in terms of your besties, right? So ask them, be like, hey, dated Ye, I've dated Pete. What do you think, what qualities would you take from each of this guy? If you were making like a perfect pygmalion -y sculpture that's going to come to life, what would it look like from these two dudes? The answer might surprise you. It might be like, you know what? I love that Kanye was like just so gang for you. He was obsessed with you, but it kind of went toxic. So I want someone who adores you, but who doesn't think of you as an extension of themselves that he has to like dress and mold and blah, blah, blah. Like, I want that to be a little healthier. I really like Pete, how he's youthful and he's not dramatic. And I'm sure he's fucking dramatic. He's got BPD, but you know what I mean. And he's like, very close with his family. Okay, right? Now we're getting some data. Write these things down. I have lists all over my house. Like I feel like I'm like the Unabomber. I just have just like list after list. So like, not just like milk, eggs, bread, but like kind, thoughtful, lifted truck, big dick, loves his mom, has a sister. This is what's on my list. So ask and find out what's in between. But let's say you're like, all right, I'm, I am in an overcorrection season or I'm just in a season of different. I've dated preppy dudes my whole life. I dated the good Jewish guy. I'm ready to branch out, man. I want to date the weird artist guy. I want to date the hipster who is super into vinyl. By the way, things are going well with Gavin. <laughs> He was my hospital pharmacist. Do you guys if, go back and watch my video, my story time on my hospital fiasco. But um, yeah, I'm like still seeing my, my pharmacist. And I, I bring this up because he's very into vinyl. Not in like a pretentious way. You know how some people are into like vinyl records. It's like the central, you know, the fixed point in their entire personality around which everything else orbits. He's not like that. I couldn't handle it. But he's really cute. I'm making lasagna tonight and he's coming up. I'm excited. Anyway. What was I saying? Okay, so you're ready to branch out, right? How do you, if you're the preppy girl or just a person, how do you get the dude who's like a little, a little fringy, a little alternative? Hmm. You know what? It's gonna be about similarities. It's gonna be about pretending you have the same hobbies. One thing I've learned about dating here in Montana, because I feel like, <laughs> I don't mean this as harsh as it sounds, but I feel like men in Montana are like a single cell protozoa version of like guys in New York. Guys in New York, it's like we think, oh, they're so like diverse and different. Bah, bah, bah. It's literally just because the city is so hectic that you like assume, oh, someone's so busy and they do all these things. I mean, they're not. Like when I think actually like granularly about the guys in New York, it's like, oh, the finance guys, like that is literally all they do. They wear a powder blue button up. How original! Still hot though. 
and like a navy blue fleece vest. Wow. And they're from Connecticut. Oh my God. You know, but they seem more diverse. And out here, because there's just, I guess, less noise, guys seem very simple. And I say this because based on my experience on the dating apps and just dating and having guy friends, they want a girl with the exact same hobbies. I mean the exact same hobbies. I think one example I keep mentioning because I keep seeing it is like, like first rounds on me if you know how to row. Like a fucking boat. Row. Not like row crew, like on a rowing machine. Like row a goddamn boat out into the river while he fishes. I'm not your nautical bus driver. Like why do I need to know how to row? You're going to chip my nails. I'm going to get calluses on my hands. Like I'm digging graves or something. But this is what dudes like. I want a girl who likes craft beer. Fuck out of here with your goddamn craft beer. I'm not trying to gain 10 pounds every time we go out to dinner. Craft beer is gross. It's gross. (sighs) And a girl who hunts. I don't want to help you pack out 1,300 pounds of elk. I just, the whole thing. And I always say like, I don't put in my profile, I want a guy who knows how to bake under iBake and loves Sephora and can pick out a great Riesling. And if you know Lisa Vanderpump's last Real Housewives tagline, drinks on me. How many dates would that get me? Girls never want a guy who does their hobbies. Guys want girls who do their hobbies. Why? Because men are fucking selfish, right? They're basic and they're boring. And more than anything, they are narcissistic. Oh, what a rosy view of men. But you kind of get what I mean. Not all dudes, not all dudes, but guys like this, (sighs) guys who have very specific hobbies, like, yeah, they want a girl who does it too. So that they don't really have to branch outside their comfort zone. Someone needs to come inside their comfort zone. I don't really want to learn anything new. Oh, sushi. Oh, eating pussy. Oh, going to Spain. They're very on their lane. You can come into this lane, but I'm not going into your lane. I don't get you. No. Like, why don't you just date your friends, man? Just sit around jerking each other off. Whatever. So my point is, this pathology is the same for all people. All men right? All men. Preppy guys want preppy girls. They play tennis. She's got to play tennis. Backwoods country dudes want backwoods country chicks. This is not unique. So whatever this dude is into, guess what the fuck you're going to have to get into? That's right. Anime. What is man? Is it manga? Manja? It's not manja. That's Italian for eat. I'm, you know, parlo italiano. <laughs> Conosco manja. But like, is it it? I've only ever seen it as porn. I like anime porn. Do you know why? Because it's victimless. Like if I watch regular porn, I'm always like, is she really enjoying it? Do you think she's enjoying it? I don't know that she's enjoying it. And then I can't like get into it. Like I don't like it. Anime? They're just cartoons. They don't even exist. (laughs) Please don't show this to my mom. I should have put like a mom warning at the beginning. So I say this because don't think... You're going to go like all prepped out up to like the anime guy and like wow him with your exhaustive knowledge of British history. You're probably not. Because if he's kind of on the fringes as, not fringes, but you know what I mean. If he's a little alternative as it is, he needs someone to meet him there so he feels better about that. Why? Social inclusion is ba-ba. Yeah. We need to feel like we're part of a tribe. And we don't want someone around who reminds us with their own personality that we are not actually part of the tribe. So goths hang with goths. Preps hang with preps, right? Because they're creating their tribe. They don't cross-pollinate because they feel like an outsider. And to feel socially like an outsider feels like the kiss of death. This is especially true when you're an adolescent. You get an oxytocin hit from social connections, which is why teens are more predisposed to peer pressure. And not just like person to person, societal peer pressure, right? So this is not something that you can necessarily override very easily. And if you think you're gonna go and this is gonna be some like rom-com type thing where it's like the goth and the prep get together, it it will not be. I've got news for you. It, 
It might be. Some of you guys leave me in comments being like, we were great. You're an outlier. You are not the norm. You're the exception, not the rule. Okay. So go in with eyes wide open. Like, and now I know what you're saying. Well, Shallon, opposites attract. We've done videos on this before about Courtney and Travis. And like, they seem like they're opposite, but actually they're not. They have a lot in common. And we went through the four pillars of compatibility. And we did this again recently, also talking about Travis and Courtney, on the six green flags of compatibility. Like the six green flags that someone's actually your soulmate and someone's the one. So go back and watch those. But long story short, how people recreate is hugely important in terms of compatibility. When we say opposites attract, we mean that in small, small ways. Oh, he knows how to make Greek food. I only know how to make Italian. That is still within the same wheelhouse. We will like to cook, but he cooks something totally different, right? It's not, he hates sweets and I'm a baker. He loves sports and hiking and camping. I'm an indoor cat. I like room service and mimosas. That might seem sort of like, woo, oh, that's crazy. You got in a hunt? Wow. That's jazzy for like the first date or two. But when it comes down to actually putting that into action, when it's Saturday morning and he wants to go out at 4.30 in the morning to go hunt an antelope and you're like, I would like to stay in bed and then go get brunch. Thanks. You're not going to be doing the same activities together. And if you're not together, how are you having a relationship? You know what I mean? Of course, people should have their own individual interests. We just talked about this. But at the end of the day, if the majority of your interests are opposite, it finds hard to, it's hard to find common ground, right? So keep this in mind. I'm not saying you're doomed and you can't snag the alternative guy, but you're going to have to look at his personality, plot his sort of like brand characteristics. He likes anime. He likes drawing. He likes vinyl. Don't know I'm ever going to get into anime. I love art. I love art. And you know what? I love music. I don't know anything about vinyl, but I really love live music and I love going to shows. Okay. All right. Okay. And you can approach him like that. Be like, hey, like I noticed you drawing the other day at lunch. Like it's really good. I'm a big art fan, but I've never like what, like who, what artists do you love? Because that's like not the kind of art I typically look at, but I really like it. Now you have put yourself both in this world, the art world. He's getting to feel like an expert teaching you something, which gives him an ego boost, makes him feel like he's, I don't want to say above you, but has use in your life. You're not just like the pretty girl hitting on the hipster and he's like, I just can't handle you, right? When I date, when I try to date like super country guys, I play up my army ROTC history. I know guns. I know slithering around in the woods. Do I do it now? No. But yeah, I'd be willing to learn. Let's go try it. Guys who like to camp. I'm like, I'm probably not going to like pack out into the woods on a five mile hike, but I'll totally RV camp with you. That sounds fun. You can pitch a tent outside. I'll sleep inside. Now we've got some common ground, right? It's going to take a little bit of strategy. But if you think about it, then you both are expanding your horizons. But look, beware. Like we said, sometimes guys don't want to expand their horizons. They like their horizon exactly where it is. You can come and look at the same horizon, but you're not expanding it. You're going to know that real quick. One thing I will tell you, please hear me. If you hear nothing else in this video, probably should have said this up front. Do not assume that the alternative guy, the shy guy, the weird guy, the quirky guy is going to be any better than the lacrosse captain emotionally. There is this wide myth that the weirder a guy is, the more emotionally intelligent he is. Where the fuck did that come from? Some of the harshest burns I've ever received from dudes are from like the quirky guy, right? Like, and I was blown away by it because I thought, you know where I'm going with this, kill the cheerleader. I thought he's going to be obsessed with me. Like <sighs> I'm not as bitch he's ever touched. I mean, <laughs> come on, come on. He, he's into anime. Like give me a fucking break. And they just bodied me. Why? Kill the cheerleader. Kill the cheerleader. If you guys are new here, you've never heard me talk about this. Kill the cheerleader syndrome is a term I've coined. It is mine. It belongs to me. 
that like when you get a nerd who grows up and gets power or not even grows up and not even gets power but suddenly has like a hot chick paying attention to him you would think he'd be like oh my god yes oh oh, this is what i've been praying for and no a lot of times it's not like that they will neg that girl as revenge for all the other pretty girls who rejected them it makes no sense they're cutting off their nose to spite their face but they do it they do it and we see it it's like i'm sorry you're rejecting me and they're like oh yeah even though it's like but you could have me isn't that kind of better revenge for all the girls who've rejected you to like have a really hot cool chick no 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 it makes no sense but they're driven by this deep-seated revenge and this like emotional wound and if you get caught in the crossfire of it they will annihilate you emotionally right So don't go into this thinking he's just going to be like so grateful to be dating someone like me. He's going to treat me like a queen. No, it's how it literally happened to me recently. And I I was breaking it down for him in text. I was like, you are exhibiting kill the cheerleader. I'm the hottest bitch who's ever even looked at you, dude. Like we all know this. We all know this. And he just like couldn't, he couldn't stand to really like have me. And like, thank God he didn't. He was, I think I was just doing it for sport, you know? But he goes on to date some weird ass goth girl who's like, oof, the teeth alone. Anyway, and I'm like, literally her. But that's where he feels comfortable. That's more in his wheelhouse because he's like the weird dude, right? And she is below him, poofing up his ego. Men date down, women date up. It is true. It is true. So beware of this. And don't think that if he's being a dick, it's it's just because he's shy. He, who You know what? Who cares? So he's shy. He was bullied. And? Is that a license to kill? I, I'm going to go back to the example I always give of like a drunk driver. Does a drunk driver intend to go out and kill someone that night? Is that like why they're throwing back shots at Applebee's? No. I'm going to go kill somebody. No, they don't intend to but they do. Intentions don't mean shit. If you're hurting someone, I don't give a fuck why. I don't, I don't, I don't fucking care what's motivating, what's motivating you. I spent a lot of my life just untangling the knots. Well, here's why he's like that. And what does that get you, girl? Does that change the outcome? No. It just means you're actually giving him a pass for behavior he's doing on purpose, doing consistently, and probably won't stop doing. So who's the clown now? You me don't do it pretend if he's being a dick be like if the lacrosse captain was doing this exact same behavior sending me this exact same text would I be giving him the same pass would I be like no that sounds exactly right like this is the exact same wheelhouse would I think it's okay no so why are you thinking it's okay because this dude like hangs out you know at like some vinyl bar or like whatever Cause he's got interesting hobbies and wears like hats. Like, okay, whatever. I don't think so. And if you're considering dating someone who isn't just a little like alt, someone who's like more on the fringes of your social circle or society, like they're a loner, please remember, please know, nobody is a loner on purpose and by choice. No, no, they're not. No, no girl. No, no. Think about it. We talk about the hierarchy of needs, right? Very bottom, food, shelter. What would you say about someone who has access to a home, but they choose to sleep on the sidewalk? Well, they're probably mentally ill. Yes, exactly. Not like a loner is mentally ill, but we know that the next step up in terms of needs is social inclusion. So someone who has divorced themselves from society is... This is not how we're hardwired, is what I'm saying. We're hardwired to seek food and shelter. We're hardwired to seek a tribe. If he's not doing that, there's a reason. Either he doesn't feel like he can be part of a tribe. He has been, you know, bullied or whatever. Again, that's not a choice. You're not choosing to be on the outskirts of society. You feel like you have no other choice. Or he wasn't bullied and he's purposely moved himself out there. In which case, there might be something very not great going on in inside of him and do you really want to stand right next to that right again do not romanticize someone's societal infringement 
Do not say that, well, that's just because he's so unique. Okay, serial killers are unique. This is not, there's unique like Beyonce. There's unique like Ted Bundy. Which is it? I'm going to go bet. Every time bet. So look really at what you're seeing here and why you're maybe drawn to someone on the outskirts. Do you feel like you're on the outskirts too? Okay, let's maybe look at that. Maybe the answer isn't dating somebody who might have some bad stuff going on, might have some bad history that they can't let go of. Not that you should punish people for their history, but you also don't need to make someone's problems your problems. You have enough problems, girl. You wearing an underwire bra right now? That's a fucking problem. I've got cramps like you wouldn't believe. I got enough problems. I don't need to solve somebody else's. I'm sorry. I'm they're, Maybe they're a great person. I release you with love. Great. Maybe the answer is you focus on making friends. You focus on joining the volleyball team. You focus on getting your own social inclusion needs met instead of putting yourself out on the fringes too. So there can be a lot going on underneath the surface if you find yourself drawn towards someone who's kind of on the fringes of society. It could be you're in a data gathering season. Cool. Like as long as you know that, you know, hey, self-awareness is great. Try it. Get that palate cleanser. It could be that you yourself feel disenfranchised and it seems like, well, I feel like a loner and he's a loner and maybe we can be loners together and now I won't feel so lonely. Okay. That's not, that can be healthy. It can be not that healthy, but only you can know that. And just, I just encourage you to take a step back and always look at what's driving you. Always let's look at what's driving our behavior. We're so afraid to do it and we're so afraid of the answer. There is no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer, right? It's just an answer. And like, don't we want to know why we do things? I am constantly seeking that information because then I can harness it and then I can control it. And you know, I love to control things and people, right? I want to control myself first and foremost. I don't want to feel like I'm a slave to my own impulses and have no idea why. I don't think that's fun at all. It's like when you start eating and you can't stop and you're just like, I'm fucking miserable. Or like the day before your period, you know, when you're just like eating, 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 and you're like, what is happening to me? And then you get your period and you're like, oh, okay. I wish I'd like had the foresight to check my hormone app and like my period app and be like, okay, that's why. And when we do know that, we're like, all right, now I know why. I know it's going to end. I know how I can ameliorate this. I know maybe what I actually do need. Great. Knowledge is power. Don't be afraid to look at what's going on beneath the surface. There's no thing that's right or wrong. There's only inauthentic and authentic. And we can never find that authenticity if we're not willing to look at what's driving our behavior and therefore what we truly need, not just knee jerk want, but what we need in the first place. I want to know your thoughts on Kim and Pete. Ugh. What's what were their couple's name? Kardashian did Kardashian. We're gonna, we're gonna keep on kicking that around until we get something. But hopefully, this uh, couple will have really gone much further. <laughs> I'll see you later, Shalligators. Like I said, if you have a question, you want to talk to me one on one, go ahead and click the link down below. Head to my website, shallowmuster.com, and be sure to binge Eat the Wave. I'll see you later. Bye.